I am waiting to meet Rochelle Bradley, fabulous romance writer. Let me tell you, these two books start out with a twist. Double D Ranch is your first one you want to read. Oh my gosh, she'll be here soon. <laughs> Jessie's the main character, and she inherits her grandmother's collection. Yes. And it is wall to wall, floor to ceiling, tray size, and traditional paperback romance novels, all <laughs> kinds. So, when you inherit that many romance novels, what do you do with them? Well, in her case, uh, she was kind of um, disgruntled with romance, so she wanted to get rid of them. She wanted all romance out of her life, so uh, that included the romance novels. And so she decided to donate them. But she did not want <laughs> her grandmother's obsession to be known. <laughs> and in a small town, uh, especially if she got her friends together, it would leak, and she didn't want that to be known. So she decided to enlist the help of a bitter divorcee, BJ, who was just as grouchy as she was, or anti-love as she was, and he was, um, and he was going to take him to the uh, senior center or wherever to read the book. So how did? How did she come about not staying at home but ending up at the Double D? She wasn't raised there, was she? Oh, uh, her grand when her grandparents died, she inherited it. So, okay. um, she knows. I was she, just saying, it's not hard. <laughs> yeah. She inherited the Longhorn Cattle Ranch, and inside the ranch was the, her grandma's collection. And now, her love interest turns out to be um, one of her ranch hands. Right. Actually the only ranch hand at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Makes <Yeah>. it good. <laughs> they, they met, um, they had a head-on collision. Well, it was an accident. There was a, a dog that ran out in front of Josiah and um, he was in high school and she was graduating because she's a few years old. And uh, that's how they originally met. So um, his grandparents, um, you know, he felt uh, horrible because he, well, he had this little compact car and she had this giant truck. She could have just run, run him over with a speed bump. So they had this joke that, you know, you could have killed me or no, I would have killed you. You know, they, would, they didn't kill each other. So it was a joke, but uh, he had a crush on her way back then and he ended up started to work for his, the grandpa on the cattle ranch and um, you know, it was just too soon too, they were just too young to you know and she at that point uh, you know how it is when you're when you're young and uh, you somebody else who's younger has an interest in you in there in high school and you're not it's kind of weird then yeah until you get out and then the age doesn't matter as much Right. So it took a while until, it took, until she was 20, uh, she's like 28, she inherited the ranch. So, and Josiah, uh, 25, 24, turns 25 in the book. And then her parents own and operate the big deal? 
her dad, her mother passed away um, when she was, I don't know, I can't remember exactly. Um, she's in elementary school. Her mother uh, had a, she, got, she died in a car crash. So um, her grandmother was very influential, influential in her life. But her dad does own the big deal. Which is another Walmart, it's a Walmart cattle ranch. And they share uh, acreage. They put up to each other the Longhorn and the, or the big deal and the double D. What inspired you to write this? Okay, well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> I mean, I love reading it. What it's, all I can think of is what inspired you. Okay, a lot of my stories or ideas stem from dreams I had. So I wrote it for Nano um, 2013, which is National Novel Writing Month, and um, it's November. And so you know, um, I'm just doing this because in case somebody doesn't know what Nano is, um, they we write 50,000 words for 30 days in November. And um, I had planned to do an, an epic fantasy. <laughs> so Lebanon, Virginia. 42. No. Okay. Well, one of your guesses was correct. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's like algebra with road signs or road <laughs> state routes. Um, but two days before I was going to do this Nano, like I had everything planned, all my fantasy, like my world, and I had an outline, and then I had like researched it for months, and then all of a sudden, I had this dream, and it was two days before Nano, two days before Nano, <laughs> and it was uh, this idea of Jesse and um, her wall of romance books that she had to deal with. What would happen if you would inherit, and you didn't want romance, but you inherited all these romance novels? I mean, it's just full of romance. And, and it just kind of, I had nothing. I had no people's names. I had, um, I had, I mean, I had nothing. Two days, and I just wrote it. So, <laughs> so you did it completely by the seat of your pants. Oh, yeah, I'm a total pantser. <laughs> Do you believe the flow um, helps? More creativity. The flow as a pantser? Um, yeah, I mean, that and uh, through Nano, I've learned to turn off my inner editor. So, which is, it's been like a long time coming <laughs> to train myself to do that in November, but it really does help. And then I've also learned while writing during panorama that um, if I don't like a sentence instead of deleting it I will write the sentence three or four times sometimes until I get it to where I like it now that makes editing a pain in the butt because I go through and I say oh look I've got the same sentence three times but then I can butcher it and get it to where I like it because I have three different versions of it that I can manipulate into one so it does help it's just sometimes it's kind of But with the with the double D, um, yeah, with total total seat of my pants in the whole um, November, I wrote Jesse's perspective. But as you know, I there's also Josiah, Josiah's, right. so I went through and added his perspective later because I we needed his perspective, and um, I also about three quarters of the way through November. Had a desire Hardman. And as you know, <laughs> she's a card. <laughs> yeah, she's in the very beginning. So I went through and I had to add her because when she came, I was just like, oh my gosh, she's like, so who? Oh, she is. <laughs> okay, she has to tap my inner desire. You never know what's coming out of that woman's mouth. I know, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. I think I want to be her when I'm old. <laughs> She would be a good one to, you know, emulate. 
I don't know. Get some lawsuits and smacking people's butts and <laughs> true. But you know, you you can claim the senile, you know, oh, part at that point yeah. in time. I thought you were my husband. <laughs> More than a fantasy, and it, I just sent it to my editor. And so when she gets it back, um, I'm going to do final edits, but in a format, of course. Uh, but the release date for the ebook I have so far is May 21st. Okay. So it's coming up, and then I have I'm already starting edits on the fourth book, um, and that's called Municipal Liaisons, which is <laughs> and it's funny because. Back to NaNoWriMo, I am a municipal liaison, but it's also about the mayor, so they're all <laughs> shenanigans that happen in Fortuna. It's the, the mayor of Fortuna, which I introduced him in the double in the in the double D. Right. And then after that, so that's four that are novel length um, in the Fortuna uh, series, and then I have um, Brad, the dad, is in the book club. With BJ, the mayor, and um, Parker Ford, and Forrest Green, and Cannon Burns, who's a new character. And I do, um, I'm, they're going to be uh, novellas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> book club. So it's called the Fortuna Dare Society. And I'm going to do, uh, it's going to be uh, Brad Cannon. Parker and Forrest, they're going to have novellas, and then BJ will eventually get his own novel because he's such a character. <laughs> well, you know, he has to come around. Well, in, in book four, in the mayor story, um, the mayor and BJ are good buddies, and they just are like an old married couple, where how they bicker. And uh, they're really, he's, he, he's, you get to know BJ. I mean, and it's been a, it's been time since, like, it's been a couple of years as the time progresses. And, from when he was kind of a, a poop <laughs> to Jesse, so he's had time, and he's and he's like the dare guy of Fortuna. Like he is the love guru, the the, the romance pimp of Fortuna. 